Hello and welcome back to episode 9 of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I'm Vic and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. So now that we're uh, fully prepared on both hands to do some archaeology, um, let's, let's not. Let's instead have a look at the map. A plan for this whole operation. Mm-hmm. Near the city of Corinth, British archaeologist Sir George Griffiths has discovered the well-preserved tomb of a Roman legate. Titus Lemonius, owner of the legendary twin sword of Romulus gifted by Augustus himself. In an exclusive interview, Sir George has described the find as a priceless addition to the history of humankind. The entrance was found by the removal of several blocks of soil around prominent statues, revealing the tomb. According to Sir George, the statues represent the life of Titus, a female statue, presumably a mother, holding a basket of fruits, looks to the west. Another female figure, perhaps Autumn, with a sickle in her hand, looks to the east. Sir George presumes that these statues are hidden allegories of Zephyrus, a minor, a minor god of the west wind, and the other, Eurus, god of the east wind. All this being played in a circle with the statues of the two brothers, Titus and Vitus. The achievements of the archaeologists have been acknowledged by the crown. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. You don't want to just take a picture of it? This reminds me of my father's ring. I suppose it was the pictures as a whole. That tent looks like it has water standing in it. Sounds about right, to be honest. And here we have the dig itself. Yeah. Am I actually going to do a hecking dig in here? Swift lost his... Which statue was damaged? Well, that one sort of made sense, actually. Workers at the dig site found a statue with a lion helmet head. It originally lay on the pedestal closest to the beach, but someone kicked it over the edge. As a result, the statue broke and the pedestal remained tilted. Cool. Oh, and John is pleased. Good for you, John. How about I shove you into that well? Will you be pleased then? Why do I care about a broken statue? Yeah, okay. Right. Tell you what, John, you just sit there and nurse that bottle forever. Does that work? It would work for me. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. An inscription near the four pedestals translates to Vitus rests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. A goddess? A mother? Someone's wife? There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I don't care what you wonder, John. I really have 
no idea what I'm supposed to actually be doing here. Oh, hey. That's a big one. And, uh, look at that. He's unmodified. <sighs> Sherlock won't even go swimming with the naked man. What are we doing here? Okay, so big picture, I think we're we're trying to decide if one or the other or both of the boyfriend and the business partner uh, killed the the dead men. Can I get over there? I don't think I can get over there. Um, and I'm not not super sure why I'm poking around the site in order to elucidate this. ask you a question? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Maybe I have to make a discovery in order to bring it to him so that he'll be more chatty? I think that's probably likely, right? I probably need to just stand around someplace like this and flip through clues until something interesting happens. statue used to be here and somebody kicked it over and it flew off into the ocean is, is that really what I'm being asked to believe right now come on by the gazes of his brother in the autumn wind. Yeah, so I think I think I'm supposed to actually discover the tomb itself. I'm supposed to just do this guy's job for him. And then ta-da, uh we'll solve a crime or something. Concentrate real hard on that Pinor. I hope that's not detailed enough that I'm going to have to blur it out, because I guarantee I'm not going to remember to blur it out. <sighs> that would be super inconvenient. And that guy's just standing there talking to his buddy. And what are you doing? Quite daunting to see how deep the dig is. It, is it deep? Is it daunting? I mean, it just looks like it's here on the way down to the beach. Like, I don't, I don't know what the big deal is. But I do think that up here is... I'm a little surprised that one of the clues isn't just the inscription by itself. Gotta be something more over here that I'm supposed to discover, right? I mean, duh. I don't know why there's nothing interesting here. Did the Romans live in Amphoras? I see nothing else here. 
What if I put your brain in an amphora and then buried it for 2,000 years? Why, why is there even a down here to go to? Working and living by the sea. What a dream. I mean, it, it has its pros and cons, John. All that humidity can make the summer pretty unbearable, especially when air conditioning hasn't really been invented yet and electricity is pretty much a novelty. Um, and, and also, humidity not so great for, for metal stuff. So, you know, kind of kind of problematic in the big picture. It's really interesting the way that's just like half a pillar, isn't it? Look at that goober. Sherlock would be so much more efficient if he wasn't wasting all that brain power on an imaginary friend. Alright, I've been doing this for far too long, so it's pause time. Okay, so it looks like I overlooked a little clue area uh, back by archaeologist man, so here we go. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. You can't fuck them, John. You are you don't even have a ding-dong. Titus and Vitus, Titus and Vetus, Lemonius, were legendary legates of the early Roman Empire, starting their military career to suppress the riots of Bellavaci and Allobroges. I have no idea. They were the key commanders during the siege of Mutina at the Battle of Act and the Battle of Actium. With the new Emperor Augustus, the brothers received twin swords, presumably the ones previously belonging to Romulus and Remus. The brothers served as legates to conquer the Dalmatian and African provinces, and were famous for their worship of minor gods. Titus honored Eurus, while his brother prayed to Zephyrus. Not much is known about the brothers except for the description by Pliny the Elder. Titus wore the skin of a lion with its head on the helmet, a tradition he picked up while being a signifer. Vitus held a shield large enough to cover the sky. Though the exact locations of the tombs remain unknown, historians know that Titus died in spring of 10 AD, while Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. Well, I'm not terribly convinced that helps us much. It's an interesting helmet. Is there more back here? Oh. Oh. I should have looked at his table. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Do you see that? He's got those same darts. And apparently I'm not interested in that head either. Yeah, so no head. That's... Yep. Um, great. Well, it doesn't seem to me that I've arrived anywhere new yet. So what else is there? Oh, I can do a heckin' imagine now? So we're supposed to figure these bits out. Mm -hmm. 
really. Uh-huh. So Iris with a sickle in her hand. Somewhere somebody told me what direction. for the other ones. That's the lion head boy, huh? Oh. So it's lion head or shield boy. And then we've also got what? Again? Why would she be on this side too? Here we have... Uh-huh. But what about that? You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. John? Nobody... I mean, where, where are the fucking clues that I'm supposed to be using? Huh? Here we go. Female statue allegory of the wind god Zephyrus looking west with a basket of fruits in her hand. So that's her, and right now she's facing east, so. Yeah. And you are supposed to be facing the other way, I'm pretty sure. Eurus with a sickle, looking east, yeah. Between these two were the remains of the statues of Titus and Vitus. So the lion head lay closest to the beach. So we got this one right. What about the directions they're facing? I guess if we do that, then they're all facing in a in a circular pattern, aren't they? That's kind of nice. It seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. What does it have to tell us? Hmm. Why? Why did nothing happen? the scene recreated, I should see if the location of the tomb becomes clear. So, uh... It's not even marked anymore. Vitus rests nearby, beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he's guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. See, in the previous games, when we did an imagination, he would draw lines with his head, and then we would follow the lines to off we go. And instead... Instead, what do we have? We have a bozo that can't walk down the stairs. And apparently Poseidon... Wait. Was there something about Poseidon? No. There really ought to be a marker now. And there's no marker. And why is there no marker, huh? 
quite daunting to see how deep yeah, the dig is. Is it up of stairs? I'm sure that I'm not supposed to tell what's his name until I've actually found the stupid thing. And apparently referencing the map isn't helpful. Why would that be helpful? I mean, I, I suppose I should have been paying attention to which directions which statues were facing, but... Alright, I'll be back. Okay, so I had to be concentrating and also go back to stand in the middle there, and... And now what? So that's, that's the brother, right? Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. And then if I... And how is this helpful? They're all looking different directions. Vitus rests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. Gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. And which one is which? So it's Lionhead and and Sickle. Lionhead and Sickle. Which are looking that way and that way. So well maybe we'll just go down to the beach and see what happens. No? Nothing? Sherlock, I'm gonna take you for a drown. Waves are looking a little funky out here. Did I do it wrong? Do I need to... Do I need to fix the... Statues? And if so, how do I fix them? Hmm? hell was that? It's making noises. Why is it making noises? Oh, now we have a path. What did I do that caused the path to appear? I don't... This is supposed to be a story about a supremely rational and observant individual. And I don't feel like there was anything about what just happened that struck me as particularly rational and observant, but I think this is it. Here is your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. And, uh, now he's down there. So I can go fuck with his stuff. And he won't say nothing. Because he's busy. So we just went and did that guy's job for him just so that we could have a look at his desk here. Makes sense. 
not only are these the same darts, but the same two. But the same two are missing. A box of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. The zoological bestseller Tusks and Trunks provides a most rigorous scientific description of the elephant. It is almost encyclopedic in its analysis of the creature's life, both in the wild and captivity. One crucial chapter describes the elephant's mating season, in which they become extremely dangerous. Furthermore, the book features guidance on how to communicate and interact with the big mammal. personal diary owned by Arthur Swift. He describes in considerable detail his personal life and research. More importantly, it tells of a dispute between the archaeologist and Theodore Gilden over the dig site. Day 1224, Theodore always uses his wealth to shut down complaints. I'd rather he brought a brain with more gyrification, so that he were smart enough to see the bigger picture. Not everything revolves around your darn elephant. I have only a few months before he will commence construction. He even lacks the imagination to build something beautiful. Ivory baths, the mundanity. I must think, lest our invaluable history be buried by the inconsequential. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm looking at your stuff, dummy. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me to return to my research, or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. No, I'm pretty sure you're guilty. You have a weakness for nostalgia, or rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. <laughs> Just so. Mm, yeah. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gildon made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. 
Mm, likely. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. But what about to enrage it? I'm a busy man. Yeah. <laughs> I've nothing to add. I think we're probably out of stuff to talk to him about. I've nothing to add. Yeah. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. Okay, well, we are all out of time for episode 9. So come back and see me again in episode 10, and I will show this man some more evidence. And then I think I'm probably going to have a long, hard look for the uh, boat racing boy and find out what his angle is. Talk to you soon.